Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA certifies the Diamond DA-62 light twin, a Canadian citizen petitions for a Canadian-built fighter plane, Orbital ATK completes ISS cargo delivery mission. I'm Bray Cross, it's February 25th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The light twin market in the U.S. now has another choice as the FAA has certified Diamond's new 7-place DA-62 twin, clearing the way for U.S. customer deliveries. The Diamond DA-62 is joining the family of light twin aircraft alongside its already certified model DA-42. Diamond's fleet of Austrojet fuel piston engine-powered singles and twins are touring the U.S. to let as many pilots as possible experience the simplicity of its engine operation, fuel efficiency, and performance. Currently, the demonstration team is touring California, followed by stops in Nevada, Arizona, Texas, and then moving to the southeastern U.S. Diamond's Canadian base, Peter Marr, said in part, quote, Our all-new DA-62 is getting overwhelmingly high praise from everyone that flies it. Its combination of cabin volume, utility, performance, and efficiency make it an ideal traveler for the U.S. market. A Canadian citizen who is obviously a fan of the Avro Aero Airplane has established a petition on the website change.org in hopes of convincing the Canadian government to revive the plane. The petition was started by Sitar Romo. On the page, Romo supports Canadian patriotism and says Canadians love their country and take pride in everything Canadian. He seems to believe that Canada should have its own super fighter and rejects the idea of using the U.S.-designed F-35. He is petitioning Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to consider reviving the Avro Aero in a variant termed the Super Aero. The original design concept was developed by A.V. Rowe of Canada in the 1950s. The project was cancelled in 1959, according to the Canadian Encyclopedia Online. When we last checked, his petition has 218 supporters and the ANN crew agrees that the Super Aero is one really cool looking airplane. After the break, a space age way to take out the trash. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Orbital ATK has successfully completed its fourth cargo delivery mission to the International Space Station under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services contract. Orbital ATK Cygnus spacecraft delivered 7,700 pounds of cargo to the station, which is the largest cargo shipment to date by a commercial company. The Cygnus spacecraft that carried out the mission unberthed from the space station on February 19th, completing a 72-day stay at the orbiting laboratory. Prior to its departure, the astronauts loaded the cargo module with approximately 3,000 pounds of items for disposal. Cygnus performed a safe, destructive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean, east of New Zealand, on February 20th. The company is now preparing for its next cargo mission in March from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station using its enhanced Cygnus spacecraft to deliver vital supplies and experiments to the ISS. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. Last week, we announced the latest addition to ANN's exciting Airborne Innovation Preview Series, which will debut shortly at the Sun and Fun Innovation Preview, just a few days ahead of this year's jam-packed fly-in, April 5th through the 10th. We are calling this the SFIP-16. Here are some of the details about how it works. The AIP events are carefully produced opportunities to showcase the newest and most innovative technologies available to the aviation and aerospace communities. In the case of the SFIP 16 edition, ANN will assemble and webcast an expertly produced, fast-paced program containing a series of carefully screened short three to four minute introductions to the major announcements and unveilings to be found at this year's event. 
The SFIP 16 participation is limited to Sun and Fun 2016 exhibitors and vendors only and will be further constrained to the news and announcements that are new to this year's event and have not been previewed at any major event prior to this year's fly-in. ANN's Jim Campbell notes that, quote, The AIP program has been one of the most gratifying projects we've ever undertaken. Over 64,000 viewers have watched the combined two-hour programs from Oshkosh 2015 so far. Slots for this year's SFIP are expected to fill quickly, and a lottery may be needed to decide who will be selected for inclusion. For those interested in participating in this year's SFIP, requests must be made ASAP to ANN's executive producer, Jim Campbell. The sooner the better. No kidding. After these messages, FAA reauthorization bill slows down. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. It looks like the bill to reauthorize the FAA, which includes a not universally popular proposal to privatize the nation's air traffic control system, won't make it to the House floor this week. According to Politico, the bill may be taken off the fast track. The Boeing Board of Directors has elected Dennis A. Mullenberg as its next chairman, effective March 1st. He succeeds W. James McNerney, Jr., who is stepping down from the board. Mullenberg joined the company in 1985 as an engineering intern in Seattle. Piper Aircraft has announced the selection of Wings Over Asia as its authorized service center in Singapore. Wings Over Asia has served as Piper Aircraft's dealer in the region for nearly three years. The Aircraft Service Center is located at Selatar Airport. The Experimental Aircraft Association and Soaring Society of America have joined in a memorandum of understanding that expands the organization's joint efforts to bring more people into aviation. It includes incentives ranging from membership growth and communications to advocacy and youth activities. Van Horn Aviation has received an STC for composite main rotor blades, fitting the Bell 206B Jet Ranger helicopter. These new main rotor blades have more than an 18,000 hour service life, which is more than triple the life of the current original metal blades. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The air shows at EAA AirVenture often go beyond the demonstration of aerobatic performances, and such is the case for EAA AirVenture 2016. The 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor's Day of Infamy will be commemorated this year with flying activities and other highlights recalling the events and heroism of that fateful day which initiated America's involvement in World War II. Flying activities will include historic World War II era aircraft of both American and Japanese origin, including the popular Tora 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 air show performances. The commemoration will include the flying appearance of a restored interstate cadet aircraft that was in the air for flight training over Oahu when the attack began on December 7, 1941. An evening program on Wednesday, July 27, will highlight the events of December 1941, with participants expected to include Pearl Harbor veterans and historians who have deeply researched the events before, during, and after that day. Specific details on all Pearl Harbor 75th anniversary events at Oshkosh will be announced as they are finalized. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news 
From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.